everyone. Welcome back to Inspirations with Miss T. How are you doing today? I pray that you all had a blessed and wonderful weekend. I pray that you guys had a blessed Sunday, went to church, and got the good word to help you throughout the rest of the week. Today is Monday. I pray that you all had a marvelous Monday, and I pray that the rest of the week be blessed. But you'll probably be seeing this video on Tuesday. So let's just get right into it today. Today I want to talk about how is it being a preacher's kid slash armor barrel for your pastor. Okay, an armor barrel is another type of form of a way to serve in the church, but you're serving your pastor. When your pastor even speaks at their home church and when they go out and minister to other churches, you are the person that is right there, your pastor's right hand person. You are the one that makes sure they get their water. You make sure they get their towel. You make sure you're watching over them. You make sure you're falling right next to them when they're doing prayer over the people. And even at the service, you have to be right there with them because nine times out of ten, after the the pastor gets done speaking and praying and laying hands over people they are pretty much drained and sometimes people will still follow them around the church just to get that extra you know oh what is god telling you or can you pray for me or do that like they're tired they're drained and that's why they need somebody with them to follow them so they won't go back into the spirit and begin to do the same process over again now when my mom my mom slash pastor when she began to minister and when she would go out different places to minister like out of town or even you know different churches i will follow her now the thing that i can say is when you are a pastor's um, you are very alert that's the first thing I'm, you're very alert and you're very attentive so with my situation how I went about doing my job in the church now mind you this is when I first began my walk with Christ I wasn't um, a preach I wasn't a minister or day minister or anything but since I started out with my parents in the church I knew their every move. I studied their move. I studied their ways and I studied their patterns. So you ha that's why I say you have to be very attentive and you have to be very alert at all times. When we would be at our church, I see how they minister and what they would do next as they minister because it was always the same. It never changes i knew when they begin to be sweaty and they probably forgot their towel over there at their seat so i had to make sure that they had their face towel i can tell when their voice get a little raspy or they needed something to drink make sure they had something to drink even when they begin to minister i used to stand like they're in the pulpit and i used to stand to the side not in front of the whole church but to the side because I was standing there praying while they were preaching okay so make sure that when you do it you are standing in the gap to pray with them not against them but you're praying for them that God will continue to give them the word and the anointing and that everything will go forth accordingly now that's not the time for you to stand up there be looking in the audience like oh yeah, that, I'm, I'm a bear, yeah, that, that's my mama. No, that's your pastor, and you are serving. So, have to be attentive, and you have to be humble. Mm. You have to be humble when you're doing this. You can't boast in yourself, because once you begin to do that, your attention is off of your pastor. It's all on you. Like, oh, they looking at me. I'm, I'm clean today. No, they're here to get the word, and that's your job to sit there and watch your pastor. So when your pastor moves one way, you you look and like, oh, okay, what's going on? So I started out in my church, 
I just didn't go out there her first engagement and be like, oh, I, I'm the only bearer. I know what I'm doing. I didn't know what I was doing. So that's why I sat back and I watched her and I studied every move. Once you get their moves down pat and the flow of the way that they minister, then everything will come easy. Everything will come easy. You know, make sure that if you guys are going to another church locally, make sure they face rag, their towels are clean. Make sure you have their bottle of water that they like or the orange juice that they like see now that back in the day they would have all that stuff at the church but now in this 2020s COVID hit you got to make sure you carry all your stuff <laughs> you got to make sure you clear your sanitizer your, your your own water your own juices your own cups huh Yo, you know, you got to make sure you do that now. But back then, you didn't have to. We didn't worry about doing all that because, you know, everything was good. But now you have to step up your game. Make sure you have that hand sanitizer. Make sure you have them sanitizer wipe because a lot of these churches, they don't they don't switch the mites. Now, I'm not. No, don't let your pastor get up there and speak on the mic that somebody else been already talking in and, and, and spitting in. Carry your own wives if you had to carry your own mic. When they're up there ministering, you sit to the side, like in the front. Don't be sitting all the way in the back. No, sit up there near the front so you can be very close to them. That way they can feel your spirit and they can feel your prayers, that you are praying for them. Once they're up there praying, just just sit back and watch them. If they come from behind that podium, if your preacher, if your pastor is one of the pastors that come from behind the podium and like to be out in the audience, you're going to be right behind them. Don't let the usher come from the back from the door and come up there next to your leader. That's what you are there for. That's what the armor bearer is for. You, you are there to watch over them. You are there to shield and protect them. That, that is your shepherd. You are the sheep. The shepherd already prepared you and groomed you. So now it's time for that sheep to hear the voice. Oh, God. You got to hear the voice. You got to hear the calling. And before you even accept being an armor bearer, you got to make sure that it's in your heart. Ooh. You got to make sure that thing is in your heart because the pastor is the heart of God. He's at the pastor is out there to win over souls. So you got to make sure your soul is right to follow that, that shepherd. Bring those sheep into the house of the Lord. Once that pastor moved from behind, my mom, my pastor, she was the type I knew when she did that holler. I knew if she get a little tickle in that throat that she needed some water and there was something trying to come up against her. So I'm standing there. I'm not loud. You don't have to be loud. You don't have to let everybody know that you're praying. I'm standing there looking just like this. And in my head, I'm like the blood of Jesus. The blood of Jesus over her from the crown of her head to the sole of her feet. No weapon formed against her shall prosper. That's all you got to do. Pray within yourself or your pastor. When she get the coffee, oh, you ain't got to be all, when she up there preaching, be all like in the way. Just be very discreet. Oh, there you go. And then just go away. When I notice my pastor's about to get from the podium and go out and begin to pray over people and lay hands, she sometimes she take them shoes off. I was like, uh oh, let me let me pick up the shoes and move them out the way. Cause you don't want her to trip over them shoes. Because when they get into that zone and get in the spirit, they, they it it's go time. You ain't they ain't got time for you to be telling you, okay, okay, I'm a bearer. I'm about to go lay hands. You need to know. You need to know within yourself. Okay, I got to move now. Oh, we 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 about to start laying hands now. Let let, let me go over here behind my pastor. Somebody else come over there. Oh, no, no, baby. I, I got them. You just go over there and you just catch the people. I got this. You, That's that That's that attentiveness. If that's a word. <laughs> that's, that's you being very attentive. That's you hearing. That's you watching. 
that's you sensing that, okay, we about to shift to another level. So, so when she would get ready to do that, I would get her shoes because I knew it was about to be a shift. And they don't have time. When they're in the midst of that shift, they don't have time to say, oh, I'm a bear. We about to go over here. Oh, come on, follow me over here. No, no, baby. That's why you're supposed to be attentive. That's why you're supposed to be watching and knowing the next move. That's why you study them. You study the way that they minister. You study the way that they begin to lay hands and pray over people. So when she would do that, I would pick up her shoes and I would be right there behind her. I would have the oil, she would have the mic, and I have my hand on her back, still pleading the blood of Jesus over her, still covering her, each and every last one that she prays over. You have to be with them to the very last one. And, my, and two, not two, but the Holy Ghost has brought this back to my remembrance. When you know that your pastor is about to go on an assignment outside of your house, that's when you need to fast and pray. Mm -hmm. That's when you need to push your plate back. That's when you need to don't watch TV for an hour. Don't eat. Do something that is so dear to you that you read you would you would give up for a couple of hours. If you're not that type of person to fast, start out doing it for two hours. Do it for 30 minutes and then gradually work your way up. So when I knew she would have to go and minister, we would start a consecration. We would start fasting. Not only her, I was fasting with her because why? I'm going with you. I need to be in the spirit with you. We need to be on the we need to be on one accord. Like they had the, the day of Pentecost. We needed to be on one accord. You can't follow your leader. And we already know that your leader is already up here and you still down there. You got to be somewhere right here. You, you got to have some type of discernment. You got to have that passion just like she had that passion. Oh, this person is going to get delivered today. What the Bible say? Well, there's two or three coming together in my name. So whenever she moved, I moved with her. When she was there, I was like, okay, time for a fast. When she fast, I fast. And sometimes when she was fasting, I was still fasting. Because why? I needed something from God. I wanted to do my best job. Serving the pastor, that's a big job. And I wanted to be the best serving that I could be. Just like you go on your real job, you want to be the best worker there is. Because why? You want to get all them awards and employee of the month. But there's no reward greater than what God is going to give you. Ooh, there's no reward greater than that. I said, Lord, all I want is more knowledge. All I want is more wisdom. Help me with my discernment. That's, that's what I was fasting and praying for. I didn't, you don't pay me? No, I'm not worried about you paying me. I'm worried about that good reward that God's going to give me. I'm worried about that good old wisdom, knowledge, and discernment and understanding that God is going to deposit in me. Can't nobody reward you like the Heavenly Father. Can't nobody reward you like God can. So I did that thing with the best of my ability. Wherever she needed to go, if she needed to drive, we would have to drive. I would drive her to the place, drive her to the church. We would go out to eat. She did not have to drive. Now, that ain't for everybody. Now, if you're not a driver, you don't have your license yet, still be that best armor bearer that you can be. Because I tell you, when God blesses the head, it's going to trickle down. To the, to, the, uh, to the family. If I'm standing right there next to the head, oh, I know my reward coming next. If she getting blessed, I know I'm going to be blessed. Just like she told me, I, she wasn't thinking about I'm her daughter. She was like, thank you for coming. If I got a place to lay my head when I go out of town, 
you got a place to lay your head. All I ask you to do is just come and be with me and watch over me and I'll take care of the rest. I was like, okay, I, I can do that. I got you. Now, when I started following her, I was I was saved, but I wasn't all the way there. So if somebody tried to come sideways, like <laughs> I was ready. But I prayed about it, and God helped me with that. I was like, Lord, I can't be following the pastor and want to go off on folk. So you got to make sure that you are a teachable. You're a teachable, and you're not easily to get offended or upset. You got to know how to keep that temper and that flesh under suggestion. So that's why it's good to fast and pray before you go on assignment with your pastor. Yeah, that's a good one. You got to fast and you got to pray because it ain't going to come to you easy. It's, it's not going to come to you easy. You're going to be tested and you're going to be tried. So every time you're going through something and you know something, I can tell you the best assignments was when I was tested. Ooh. When I was tested, when I thought that I wasn't good enough to stand right there next to her. God said, no, this is what you're going to do. This is what you're called to do. When you are tested and still doing the work of the Lord, that reward is going to be mighty. Some folks were like, why she get to go? She always taking her daughter. No, it wasn't because I was her daughter. It was because she saw what was in me. She saw the fasting that I did. She saw the anointing over my life. She knew I wasn't in it for any money or any fame because I was humble. I was humble. I was very attentive. I didn't want nothing or nobody to harm her. So that's why I did what I did. That's why it was so easy for us. Even when my bishop went, I was his armor bearer. Until the church started growing and we began to get deacons in there. And then they began to help out. And they would begin to help out with him. And I would be the pastor's armor bearer. But still, even when the deacons would do it, I would still be like, oh, go get Pat, go get Bishop. He need his towel. Go stand up there behind him. I was still watching. I was still on my post. So when you are walking side by side with your pastor slash parent, you, you still got to know how to separate the two. You can't go up in the church. Oh, this is my mama. My mama. No, that's your pastor. That's your bishop. So, I don't know who this is for, but I just want to let you know. Sometimes we go through so many tests and trials, and we feel that we're not worthy. We feel we are not, and we feel like we are not worthy. Like, Lord, why would you bless me with such a big job? Because he sees your inner, inner you. He sees your inner you. He sees your heart. He sees your, your prayer life. Yeah. I'm just here to tell someone, when you go and you help, your leaders don't be expecting to get paid because God is going to give you the ultimate reward I never asked my mom for nothing and I tell you it's been times where back in the day when I was working living paycheck to paycheck and she would have to go out and minister and you know you just you, you want you know you want a little change in your pocket even though you know you ain't going shopping and we be at the beach and everything. I be like, man, I don't, I don't know if I can go. She was like, I don't know, you going. Because if I eat, you eat. If I got a place to lay my head, you got a place to lay your head. I got a car. I got gas. I just need you to drive. Oh, I just need you to drive. And that's what God is telling us. 
don't worry about what people are saying. If I lead you to it, you're going to walk right through it gracefully. You don't have to have five or six hundred dollars in your pocket. Just do what I say. Quit trying to do your own thing. Let me lead. So, when you go on these assignments, do it with grace. Be the best armor bearer that you can be. That you can be. Stand up there and shield and cover your pastor with everything in you. And when they get through ministry, you make sure you cover them with prayer. You make sure you pray for your leaders. Pray for their strength. Pray that God pour back into them what they poured out. You stand right there. When that service is over with, you stay right there next to them. Don't let nobody or nothing go on with them. And then it seemed like each time she went somewhere, I just got higher and higher. Like my discernment just kept clicking. Ooh, I see this, I see that. Okay. She was like, did you see that too? I was like, yeah, I saw her, Pastor. I was over there praying for you. I was there. I was praying. I was in the spirit. So that's my things on how to serve your leader slash parents. And as being preacher kids, we see so much and we go through so much. But I tell you, the rewards that we get, it can't compare. And I just thank God for how he opened up my eyes to church and being a servant to now I'm a minister, a prophetess. So whenever you go with your leaders, cover them. Be attentive. Be humble. Keep your ears open. Fast and pray. Fast and pray before you go on that assignment. Don't just go out there and be like, oh, we had another assignment. No, you got to be ready too. If your pastor fast and praying, you better do the same thing. Y'all be on the same accord. So I really appreciate you guys listening to me. I hope this was a good video. And I pray that you all have a blessed and wonderful week. See you later, my saints.